Police received a phone call from a concerned mother who wanted to turn in her daughter. She stated that they were on the way to the police station. Moments later, a middle-aged couple and their daughter stepped into the police station. The police asked whether the mother was the one who called. She responded that she did not. Things only got weirder from here. The father pulled out a sticky note with an address on it and handed it to the police officer. He told the officer that his daughter believes there might be a dead person at that address. The officer asked the daughter whether this is true and how she would know this, and the daughter, Iana Colon, stated that she and the man at the address were in some sort of relationship. However, yesterday the man had taken some sort of drug and had become aggressive. According to Iana, the man had suddenly charged from the couch, tackled her, and banged her head against the wall. He then threw her on the bed and began choking her. Then, like a judo black belt, Iana reversed the chokehold, flipping him over and choking him until he stopped breathing. At this point in her story, the father interrupted Iana and told the police that they would like a lawyer. The officer acknowledged this and asked Iana her age. Iana said that she won't reveal that information without an attorney present, and then immediately told the officer that she is 21. The officer then asked the name of the man who is supposedly dead at the address on the sticky note. Iana replied that she couldn't give his name, but that he was from Saudi Arabia. The officer looked up the address that was on the sticky note. It was an apartment owned by Aman Alblowi. The officer then went to that apartment and knocked on the door for several minutes, but no one answered. Eventually, a neighbor from across the hall opened his door. The officer asked whether the neighbor had seen or heard anything suspicious to which the man responded that he had not, but his wife had heard an argument between a man and a woman yesterday. The officer believed that he had enough probable cause to enter the apartment. Once inside, he discovered the body of an Arab man in the closet. The body was covered by blankets and coats. The apartment was locked down as a crime scene. In the meantime, the officer requested to speak to the neighbor's wife as she had apparently overheard the argument that might have led to Mon's death. The wife told the officer that while she was in the hallway on her way back from getting her laundry, she could hear a male's voice, but because it was significantly quieter than the woman's voice, she could not make out exactly what he was saying. However, the woman's voice was loud and clear. The most common phrases were f and But particularly memorable was the phrase, why aren't you a millionaire yet? The neighbor went back inside her apartment and had no other information for the officer. While police investigated, Iana was arrested, but because she had claimed to have been strangled, she was first taken to the hospital. She was medically cleared and temporarily lodged in jail. Iana was found to have had a sizable criminal history, including the theft of purses at the YMCA and an assault on her co-worker at McDonald's. Moreover, it appeared as though Iana had planned to clean her fingerprints from Mon's home and escape the scene of the crime. Evidence of this appears via the fact that Iana was in possession of Mon's car keys when she was arrested, and her Google search history related to starting Mon's car, which was a rental. She looked for phrases such as, How to use a rental key when pad is locked up in a circle.com. You don't need to put .com at the end of that. These searches occurred slightly after Mon's medically determined time of death, and the search history was unsuccessfully deleted by Iana. Iana's text history shows that a few hours after the searches related to starting that rental car, she texted a friend, wake up, I need a ride bad. An hour passed with no response, which is when Iana began looking up the local bus schedules as per her search history. In the end, Iana changed her plan for whatever reason and contacted her parents, telling them that she had killed Mon in self-defense. Detectives requested an interview with Iana. Let's watch. Hello, my name is Derek Hess. I'm a detective here at the police department. I work with Detective Tapey. Okay. okay. You doing okay? Trying to. Trying to. Okay. This water and that other. Uh, Bars for you if you wanted something to drink. Okay. Sure. So I heard uh, a little bit about some, some something that had gone on, but I'm, I don't really. 
really know all the facts yet, so that's kind of why I wanted to talk to you. Um, are you from Kalamazoo? Did you go to high school here? Did you graduate high school? No. No. What what level did you get to in school? Um, up to 12th. Up to 12th grade? Mm -hmm. Just a little short of finishing up? Mm -hmm. Have you gone to any college at all? No. no. I got accepted into KVCC. Well, that's good. Are you uh, signed up or taking classes there? Um, I got accepted and um, I like... I didn't have enough to pay for the culinary class. So yeah, like, it's not free, is it? <laughs> That's for sure. All right. So if you got accepted to KVCC, you must like read and write, okay? Yeah, for the most part. For the most part. Okay. All right. Well, hey, one of my one of the things with my job is to kind of figure out the truth out of everything. That's what we do every day. Is figure out what happened to stuff, you know, all across the the city and in any dis different capacity as far as whatever it is, if something happened somewhere and we're tasked with figuring out what really happened. And one of the ways that we do that is talking to people. Okay. So I want to talk to you about what you've been up to lately. Okay. Okay. Um, I see you got handcuffs on, and I know we're in a jail, so that changes things a little bit for me, only that I have to read you some things before we can talk. Is that okay? All right. So it says you have the right to remain silent. And it says anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. You can have, if you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish, and you can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Okay. Do okay. you understand each of those that I read to you? Is, is it, are you shaking your head, but is that a yes? you understand each of them? Yeah. Just like remaining silent. Okay. So having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to me now? I mean, I want to hear what was said. Okay. Or... Well, the only thing that's been said is what your parents said. And I know that a lot of what they said came from you, but I mean, obviously you're the best source of information. So that's why I wanted to talk to you after either me or my partners talk to your parents. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I kind of want to hear it right from the horse's mouth, as they say. Like, get it right from the source. Okay. Is that fair? Okay. So having all these rights that I read to you in mind, are you willing to answer questions? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just... I've never been in this predicament. So. Right, yeah, no, I know. Oh, uh, it's entirely up to you. I, it, uh, it's one of those things that you can, if there's certain questions you don't want to answer, you can just say, I don't want to answer that. If you don't want to answer any questions, you don't have to. At any time, you can say, I don't want to talk to you anymore, and I'll leave. But if uh, if there are questions that you're willing to answer, I'm, I'm interested in hearing what your answers are. Okay. But it's entirely up to you. Okay. Want some water? No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't imagine trying to eat two of those Special K bars <laughs> and not drinking any water. That'd be some sort of challenge on TikTok or something, right? <laughs> Ayana, are you willing to talk to me or at least hear what I got to say? I'll hear you out, but I don't know what we all said or where. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. All right. What happened last night? Basically, he just got really violent. I think he was on some type of drug. Um, he, like, 
was sitting down on a couch and he charged at me after I threw I threw some water in his face. Why? Because he called me out my name and like kept on turning on stuff and like just, just he knew stuff that was getting under my skin, mm. basically. So anyway, um, I throw a little bit of water in his face and he like stands up and like that's when he just like loses all everything. Like, he just charges at me. He starts pulling my hair. My head is, like, all the way down here. And I'm, like, I start, like, trying to fight him back. And it was, like, the couch is, like, right here. And the door is right here. And the there's a bed, like, right next to it. So it started initially from the couch. Like, he charged at me. I landed on the bed, hit my head. And then he started to choke me out, and that's when I started fighting him back, like trying to like push him. So I pushed him successfully, like to the um, door, and he was like reaching for the chain, like trying to say I was hurting him. And I was like, "What do you mean I'm hurting you? Like, like what do you mean?" So just basically, just after that, like. He just went ham, and I blacked out, and I couldn't breathe. I had, like, I choked, like, really fucking hard. Like, I could feel, like, spit in the back of my throat. Like, when he used both hands, like, so it just made me freak out, like, and then eventually he just stopped. Breathing. So, and I felt like, I don't know, it made me feel like almost empty. Like, that's all I could really like say. And it just made me like sadder. And Sadder just looking at him, and then I just I ended up like just moving, and you know putting his favorite robe on him. I felt bad for me, and I'm putting this situation like that. Okay. Who's he? I met him, I want to say, McDonald's. Um, I was working as a cashier there for like a couple months ago. Um, and he came through the drive through and he ordered like a Big Mac or something. And I gave him my number like on the back of his seat. And, like, we'd basically been hanging out and stuff. He always, like, would, like, admit these feelings to me and stuff. And I'd be, like, just trying to be friends, you know, and stuff like that. And he just really just, like, over time you would see how he would just change. I don't know how to, like, describe it. But it's, like, he went from sweet to like sociopath like he just wanted me around him and I was just staying there so that I can just like have a place to stay for my job and you know like kick it hang out with him he's like a lonely guy so I was just like hanging out with him and you know and he just got crazier and crazier and then I noticed like particularly within the past three days of hanging out with him that he would do like this with his nose like like this like just like like he was off some type of drug and um he he told me about like this scamming stuff and like promethazine and fake doctors and just like um 
just like getting prescriptions that he didn't need. So I don't know if it was a pill or if it was like a promethazine type thing or powder or whatever. I don't know about that. But um What's his name? Uh man. It's like it's from like he's from Saudi Arabia, so it's like M A A N A L B O W I or B L O W I. Okay. Do you know his last name? That that was his last name. Oh, what's his first name? Man. Oh. M A A N. Uh, I got gotcha. you. I'm sorry. So like Man Al Bowie, something like that. Uh, like Man Al Bowie or Bowie something. I don't know. Okay. How old is he? Um, I believe he said he was 25. And he lives here by himself. Yeah. Do you know anything about him, like why he's in Kalamazoo or what he does here? Um, he he was like telling me like how he was doing like some kind of like like he was trying to like provide for his family and you know stuff like that, but he was like scamming like and using fake IDs and stuff, and he always wanted me to like join in on it, but I would just be like no, like and. I feel like gradually over time he would get mad at me because like sometimes like I feel like he thought I was using him or like something like that so like even when I like asked him to go get some like Dollar Tree cleaning supplies and stuff like he would like get an attitude and I'd just be cleaning the house or cooking for him and stuff and I don't know it was just like I don't understand why that was a problem. So were you, were you guys like dating? No. Um, the furthest thing that I allowed from him was like just a kiss on the cheek. Um, we were not like dating or together, so. Did he want it to be that? Did he want to have a romantic relationship with you? I feel like in his head, he thought he could have a relationship with me or like potentially be with me, but like, Every time he, like, tried to lay under me and, like, get on the bed with me and stuff, like, I don't know, like, he'll, like, start touching my thigh and stuff, and I'll just be like, yo, you need to back up, like, like, and he just, like, just is a really touchy-feely person, so. All right, so what was, what was going on with the apartment last night? You guys just hanging out, or what was up? Um, we were just like, we had came back from my friend's house, um, he left me out there for an hour, and he said he had to go to a class for like an hour or something. So you were at the apartment by yourself for an hour? Uh, yes, I was at my friend's apartment. Oh, okay. And, um, he came back to get me, and the reason we left my friend's apartment was because he started a confrontation at my friend's apartment like he would start doing this with his nose and stuff and i'd be like yo are you okay and you know stuff like that and then he'll like like pull down like his pants like like showing his boxers like so almost like his dick would like be seen and shit mm -hmm. and like it just like made me feel uncomfortable so i got into an argument with him at my friend's house and then my friend started sticking up for him, so I was like, I feel out of place, so we might as well just go. So, um, we left, and when we got back and stuff, I like had like the whole entire car like was just silence, no music, no nothing. Um, and then as soon as we got back to the house, he like tried playing like this music and like I'm a type of person like I like like peaceful music and you know stuff like that and he's like um the more like the violent like upbeat music I don't know how yeah. to explain it but 
um, basically, um, I just asked him to turn the music down and stuff, and then he would just, like, be doing this with his teeth, like, like, giving me these mean looks, and I'd be like, what is all that for, like, so, um, that's basically how things transpired and led up to that, and then just the name calling and all the stuff that came after it, so. What kind of names did he call? Or was, were people being called? Um, he called me like a bitch. And um, I I think really what it was was that yesterday, um, his brother, like, I would say two days ago, his brother and him took uh, me for a ride. They took me to Myers. And um, this is when we went and got the cleaning supplies. But when we had went to the gas station, he ran inside without his brother. His brother's like driving the car. So um, his brother is like talking to me and a bit like being like, did did he get any pussy from you and stuff like that? And I'm like, no. I'm like, no, that's not even a factor. Like, so I was like, um, yeah, we're just, we're friends, we're not even dating or anything, and he was like, well, to be honest, I would have been cracked to you, and I was like, like, I felt kind of, like, offended. What does that mean? But I was what just, he said? Like, cracked to you, like, like, I would have been, like, like, put my dick in you, like, type, type thing, I don't know. So, it just, like, threw me off, but, like, I was just kind of like, all right. I mean, I guess, like, laughed it off, I guess. So he comes back in the car, and he's like, where are you guys laughing at? And I was like, um, I just, like, I was just, I didn't want to say it in front of him, you know, like, and just start something between them because they're brothers or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, um, so I waited till we got back to the house, and when he asked me that, I was just like, it was nothing really, um, just like making some jokes or some shit. So when we got back to the house, we got into an argument because I needed a ride to go see my friend and he was mad that I asked him if his friend could drive me to where I was for some gas money. And he was like, he was just like, why, why, or like, why? And I was like, what do you mean why? Like, I, I just need a ride. And so he he was like hesitant at first and then he like opened up and was like, all right, I mean, I'll text him. So he texted him and then basically he got mad because I had basically said the truth. So he was like, um, he was just like, we don't, I, we don't give a fuck um, anyway. Um, we pass bitches around. And I was like, like, what is that supposed to mean? You know, like, but I don't know. It just made me feel like out of place. And then I noticed like extremely like just weird patterns of behavior like after that. But yeah, it like, I, I think really what set it off was either he was taking some drugs and then just that situation on top of the drugs like just made him like act out of anger and I don't think he was really paying mind to what he would say like he just seemed like off in the head like he was just like like laid back on the inside but like just mean as hell on the outside i don't know how to explain it you ever seen him like this before no it was just like the past three days did you see him do any drugs i didn't see him do any drugs i i saw i saw him like smoke weed like he smoked he smokes like a ton of weed Hmm. like just back to back to back and i would tell him like yo i'm on probation i can't you know what I'm saying? Be around that and stuff. And like, he'll even get like so disrespectful. Like, he'll just blow it in my face. Like, 
and just be disrespectful. So I will go try to open up the window, and he'll get mad at me for opening up the window. Like, and I'll be like, well, what do you expect? I'm not going to, like, just sit in your face, and then you're, like, smoking back to back. And I've only ever seen him use weed or cigarettes, um, any other drugs besides that. No. Um, and then promethazine, he was telling me a little bit how about how he was, like, getting fake prescriptions from, like, doctors for promethazine. And he said, like, he lost his doctor, and he was, like, pissed about it. I don't know what that was supposed to mean. What did he do with the promethazine? Um, I think, like, he would, like, sold it, like, to some of his, like, family members. Or, like, he just drank it. He was, like, I love, he was, like, I love lean, which is what they call promethazine. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Did you see him? take promethazine just like drink it i've never seen him take it but he he had like like in the apartment there's like bottles like i don't know if you guys like saw it when you went in there but there's like bottles in like one of his suitcases it's like gonna be like eight nine or ten bottles So things are not going well at the apartment. What time do you think this all kind of kicked off where he started getting mean last night? Mm, I would say maybe like around 11.30 or 12. Okay. And how did it start? Just with the name calling and stuff that you talked about? Just like when I asked him to turn down the music and... You know, I just wanted some peace and quiet because, like, sometimes I just get anxious, like, when, like, too much is going on and then the violent music is playing. Mm -hmm. It's just, like, I get, like, real fidgety, so I asked him to just turn it down or turn it off for a minute. And he was like, bitch, I'll do what I want in my house. Like, and I was just like, damn. So I got mad, and I threw the water in his face. And that's what triggered everything. So. What's the next thing that happened? What do you mean? Like, what happened? Did he... I mean, you threw water in his face, and then what happened after that? I just said what happened after that. He pulled well, me by my hair and charged it at me. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just looking for a little bit more detail. He charged at me while he was sitting on the red couch. Mm -hmm. He is smoking a cigarette. He put out his cigarette after I threw the water on his face. And then he charged at me and tackled me onto the bed. Mm -hmm. And that's when he started pulling my hair. And then I like started fighting him back and I like pushed him to the door and he started grabbing the chain and like um taking the chain off the door and shit. And then like he started doing this like around my neck okay. and then he like eventually like pushed me on the bed and like he was like choking me like I hit my head on the wall like and he was just like I could not breathe like I felt myself like swallowing spit in the back of my throat okay. and it just it just like it was like life or death at that point so I was just like Did you lose consciousness? I was like, at one point in time, I'll say maybe for like 30 seconds, I just felt like my throat was like closing mm -hmm. and like I just couldn't breathe. So I was like freaking out. I started like pulling his hair and then I like started choking him. And while he was choking me, I was just like, this is like beyond me. So. So you don't, you don't think you lost consciousness? I mean, that I lost consciousness or he lost consciousness? You. Well, he was choking you. Do you, do you think you lost consciousness? Um, yeah. Okay. Because 
my throat was closing and I was just like, I could barely, like I started seeing colors and spit closing in the back of my throat. So, I mean, I mean, some, some kind of unconsciousness was there. Like it was just a life threatening situation. So how did that make you feel when all that was going on? It made me feel really angry. I don't know, like, why he was that violent, um, like, towards me. It just made me feel like, like, maybe, like, he just was acting sweet in the beginning, like, just to, like, try to get me over his house. And then, like, I noticed, like, within the past three days, like, how he was just, like, like sexually touching me and trying to lay with me and stuff um, which is like normal because like guys do that you know but I just feel like uncomfortable and like if I tell you to like keep back backing off like cause I've been, I've been through a lot of stuff you know like I I don't like being in a type of situation where I feel like I'm uncomfortable and he just like he would like test the boundaries and then when he kisses me when he kissed me on the cheek and stuff I just be like I just want to kiss on the cheek he'll like grab the back of my head like this and like just try to like force the kiss and I'll be like so I just like be like no you need to go over there so um, yeah. was he saying anything while this this uh, fight was going on um uh, he he said like help um she's trying to she's trying to kill me or something and I was like are you kidding me like he charged at me and was choking me and then when I fought back he tried going to the door and turn taking off the chain that's where that transpired what do you think he was trying to do when he was taking the chain off the door was he trying to leave or was he trying to I felt do something else. I'm not sure. Okay. So I just like I just panicked and then he started choking me. That's when he threw me on the bed. Like trying to fight me off and stuff. And once he like started choking me and like I couldn't breathe and I felt my, my head hit in the back of the wall. Like I was just like You said earlier that he went ham, and I think I know what that means, but I don't want to guess and put words in your mouth, so what does it mean when someone goes ham? Meaning like, well, what context was, was You that said he got angry at you and charged you and then he went ham. Ham as in like, you could feel all the aggression, like like with every move that he make like when he charged at me mm -hmm. I felt all the aggression and nerves in my body just be like this is threatening like and then just when he started pulling my hair and like getting real violent and had my head like all the way down here like my shoulder was messing up it still hurts like my neck hurts and like I just like I don't want to feel anything I don't want to like eat anything I don't even want to like get any good sleep and it's like I don't know like I guess what I mean by ham is just like when you feel someone's like nerves and aggression just pass into you like with their anger okay have you ever s been in a situation with him before where you would describe it as something similar with him going ham um we were we were in an altercation where um i would say maybe like two days or like three days before this this fight mm -hmm. so um basically for the first fight and stuff like 
he would like just blow smoke in my face and like just like give me like these dirty looks and then he'll like act all lovey dovey and like it was just like almost like a sociopath like be kind of behavior and like it made me feel uncomfortable so I was just like I was like why do you do that like you just act all mean and then you're like lovey dovey and stuff and he just got aggressive with his words he was like bitch you're tripping and not, it's, it's never that and stuff like that and I was like so um he got mad at me and again he came for me like he charged at me and he started pulling my hair and I pulled out I remember he said that I got pulled out one of his braids or something like loosened it he had like braids in his hair or something but um I think like he was just like upset from that but like we eventually ended up letting each other go so what did you leave or how did that situation end um no I stayed there and it was just like kind of mute for like 30 minutes and then he like came over to the bed where I was laying on and he was just like like do you want to talk about it and you know stuff like that and I'm like I'm like sort of hesitant to talk about it with him and I'm just like I don't know like we, we admitted we were both in the wrong like and it shouldn't have got to where it got to got to but um it was like it was kind of purposeless like after it because it was like the same behaviors would still continue the next three days or whatever like so I don't know nothing changed yeah and then every time he went to the bathroom like he'll go take like a purse in the bathroom I don't know why he took a purse in the bathroom but what do you mean like I don't know, like, he'll take, like, a blunt, a cigarette, and then he'll take, like, a, like, a, almost like a satchel into the bathroom, like, and he never wanted me to open it, he always carried it with him, and I was just, like, do you think he's got drugs in there or something? I'm not sure. No. I'm not sure. What's this satchel look like? Um, uh, it was, like, a black leather Okay. And, um, yeah. I just, like, took it in the bathroom, so. Okay. Who's your friend's apartment that you guys were at where this problem happened? Um, it was all the way in another town, and I don't have that address. What town? Um, it was in Babel Creek. Do you know her name? Um, I don't feel comfortable giving you her name. Okay. All right, so kind of back to the, the fight here last night. You, you guys are fighting. He's doing something with the chain on the door, and then all this other stuff happens where you're seeing colors and and that sort of stuff. And then mm -hmm. kind of what happens after that? Just like... I don't, I don't really want to get, like, into the detail because it's, like, kind of traumatizing, like, just seeing what I saw and stuff. And, like, I'll start getting emotional, like... So I really don't want to, like, talk about, like, what I saw but I felt wrong afterwards, but I knew that it was a threatening situation. Mm -hmm. Like, I just... Okay. Yeah, I don't... I don't so you, you had said it. at one point he had stopped breathing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you said something about a robe. We put him in his favorite robe. Yeah, I had, I had covered him up with his favorite robe and stuff. Like, I, I sat there for like... 
an hour and a half and I was just seeing like if he was gonna like you know open his eyes or blink or show some kind of sign movement mm -hmm. and it never happened so I was just like I felt terrible you know cause it shouldn't have had to leave or get to that point mm -hmm. but it was just like what happened after that one? I put him in his favorite robe and then I, I took him off the bed and just uh -huh. like put him in a like put him in a better place like a like a fuzzier place like just so like I didn't have to like look at him mm -hmm. Oh. Where was that fuzzier place? I put it in a I put him in the closet. Okay. And I put his he was like in love with his dad. With and his he, dad? And he had like a chain that he would wear and it had like his picture on it mm -hmm. and so I just placed it over his lap what happened after that? I just like I sat there and I cleaned like the entire apartment. I thought you would just clean the day before. No, he bought the cleaning supplies, but they okay. weren't open or anything. Okay. Um, I had like some wipes already in the house and stuff, so I just used that to like um, clean the other day, but gotcha. okay. before we got it. So, so last night you said you cleaned the whole apartment. Yes, I like I threw away cigarette butts and all of the excess trash that was spilled on the floor. He like knocked over a couple ashtrays and candles, and um, I just like put it back all in place because like I felt I felt bad for how it ended, so I just felt like you know he let me stay in his home so thought I would just like take care of just the apartment you know okay. how long do you think that lasted that you were cleaning the apartment I would say maybe like maybe like 30 or 40 minutes okay like I um just basically wipe the tables down, um, just like cleaned or attempted to clean the bathroom, um, and then I just kind of like just sat there and cried and was just praying, so I didn't know what to do, like, I'm like on probation and stuff, I don't want to like know like like I was scared to call last night and you know like I don't I'm not used to like these situations or predicaments so when it like just all transpired it like it really hit me did you reach out to anybody last night I um I reached out to a couple people and I was like, I need you to pray over me and just pray for closure. And I texted my mom and dad good night. And um, it's just like I didn't want to like tell them like, hey, this happened tonight. 
Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I just got really emotional. And I just sat there and cried. And Did you tell anybody last night what happened? No. Did you sleep at all last night? to attempt to sleep. Like, I had nowhere to go. It was like, hours. Like, after, you know, I didn't have anywhere to go. Yeah. Just, I tried falling asleep. So that, when I moved him from off the bed, because I can't sleep on the couch, and I just like try. Is there only one bed in the apartment? Yeah. I haven't been there, so I, I, I'm not asking you a trick question or anything. I haven't been there. So. so when you wanted to sleep off the bed, that's when you moved him? Okay. So then what was happening through like real late at night or real early this morning? Like what was going on then? I, I woke up like around 6.30 and I, um, cause I had a probation call at um, 8 o'clock mm -hmm. so I set an alarm on my phone um, to just like remind me to wake up and um, I had ended up leaving the house like kind of early after I like texted a couple people and I was like I want to like I need you like I want to see you and I just ended up leaving and catching the bus because I felt out of place there and I was like, mm -hmm. it didn't feel right just being there where'd you go on the bus? I went to my cousin's house. Okay. What's your cousin's name? I'm not comfortable answering that. Okay. Did you tell your cousin what happened? Yes, he was one of the first people that I told this information to. Okay. Who else did you tell today? my parents like I was like stuff just ex escalated and they was like is anyone hurt and I just I felt bad started praying okay. and just they just said that I should come up here Okay. And that's when your dad got to town? He came like, he was like two hours after I arrived at my cousin's house. Okay. And I just... I was just in shock, like, mm -hmm. I felt like I just, like, you know, needed, there's support, like, I can't just walk around pretending like that was normal, what happened last night. Right. Oh. Yeah. What time do you think you went to sleep last night? You told me you woke up at 6.30, but what time do you think you went to sleep? They were like around 3.30 or 4. No wonder you're so tired. You only slept a I couple hours. I really restless. Yeah. So once your dad got there, it sounds like your mom was aware that something happened and they came and got you. Is there? Did you tell anybody else other than your cousin and your mom and dad? like 
a couple of my family members because like I don't really want to get into specifics but I just feel like I needed to express it and you know instead of just letting him sit there and rot you know yeah How did you, how, how did you reach out to your parents to let them know? Um, I called them um, via phone and text message. Um, is the text like regular text, um, or is it like Facebook Messenger or text now or something? Or what, what is it? I don't want to say. Okay. So in some fashion, you reached out to your folks, and that's how they got here to support you. See if my list of questions is all. Uh... Do you know if uh, this guy has family around here? I never met any of his of his family. Okay. Um, I met his brother, or in quotation marks, I don't even know if like they're real brothers or. If they're just like best friends or whatever, but right. what kind of car does he drive? Um, I believe he had a rental, and um, I'm I'm not sure exactly what type of car it was. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Did he typically use rentals, or did he was that did he have his own, and then the rental was extra? Um, he said he had his own car, but his car was like in the shop oh, or something. Okay, well, that's why he had the rental done. Is... And like getting it repaired, and then he would just like get rentals, like basically every other day, hmm. like just to get by or Uber. You think of anything, sir? I'm just not, because you may have already answered the question. I'm curious, how long have you known him from, for? Um, this was back when I had my McDonald's job, so like, I'd say maybe like, maybe like a month or two. You've known him for a month or two? A month or two. Okay, and up until last night, how many nights in a row had you stayed with him at the apartment? I'd say maybe like about a week. Okay, you've been staying there about a week. Had you stayed overnight there before? I, I like came over and like kicked it with him and he would like drive me like like places that I needed to go to stay and stuff. Okay. But um, he like, I was basically just telling him like I had like when I had nowhere to go like he would come pick me up and I'd go over to his house and we'd just kick it. Okay. And then it was just like the touchy feely stuff and just kicking him off the bed. And the touchy feely stuff kind of came on as as it the just time got you more knew. aggressive. Like gradually, it was okay. like just um like it'll start with like a, a thigh touch or yep. Or like a damn, you look good, and okay. you know stuff like that. And then um, when he'll be like, um, "Can I kiss you?" And I'll be like, "You can kiss me on the cheek," cause like I'm not gonna lie, like like I noticed like his eyes were like yellow and stuff, so like I didn't want to lay down with him. 
And okay. like, I don't want to like, judge anybody for that, you know? Yeah. Because everybody goes through something in life. Uh, but I just noticed, like, he would, like, grab the back of when I said that he would grab the back of my head and, like, kind of force, like, try to force the kids, like, you know, come here. Mm -hmm. and, like, I don't like stuff like that sure. because mm -hmm. I've been through traumatic okay. and difficult experiences. Okay. Like sexual trauma. And, oh. What would it mean if his eyes are yellow? Just, like, I didn't know if, like, maybe, like, he had, like, hepatitis or, oh, okay. you know. Sure. So, so you've known him for a month or two, right? I've known him for a month or two. Okay. Had you stayed with him prior to the most recent three or four nights or week, had you stayed with him for any length of a time, like nights in a row before that? Um, I'd say, like, like two weeks before that, we, we kicked it at his house, like, maybe, like, once or twice, and he would just drive me, like, to my friend's house, stay the night. Okay. And then, um, like, I'd say maybe, like, a couple weeks later, like, he would just, like, text me and, like, you know, like, on my phone, and, um, he'll be like, hey, you should come over, and I'd be like, well, I actually don't have anywhere to stay tonight, and, you know. So he'd come get me and okay. we'll go back to the apartment. And then I just gradually like was like, maybe I could stay here for a couple of days or nights because okay. I was getting a job at Carabas. Okay, yeah. And um, be handy. I had yeah. um, just like scored an interview there yesterday and like everything was going good. And that's why like it really like just was like, weird for me like just to have that happen when everything was going so good you know right okay of the of the time frame that you have known him how many nights total would you say you spent the night there and i know that it kind of came and went as you needed a place to stay i would say like maybe maybe like a week and two days Okay, so like a week being seven days, so maybe a total of nine days? Yes. Okay. Like Overall. twice twice before the week where he would twice before like when I didn't have anything where to stay or whatever. Yep. Okay. And then the week, um, a couple weeks after I come over there for a day and that's when I asked him if I could stay for a couple of days. Okay. And then I saw that Carabas was hiring. Yep. I was like, maybe I could just get a job and lay low for a little mm -hmm. bit over here. And it was just like, it became a problem and a problem and problem. So. How many times was he violent with you during the time you've known him? I'd say maybe about like three times. I just noticed like, like when he'll start grinding his teeth and like okay. just giving me these like weird looks like he just hated me. Okay. And like he'll like blow his smoke in my face like like if I'm sitting like on the bed and stuff, like he'll come over in my space like or walk over me and be like like all in my face and I'll be like That that's creepy <laughs> and I get where you're coming it's from the bedroom. Eerie. It's eerie and kinda of creepy. How many times did he ever put his hands on you when you didn't want his hands on you? I would say, but like sexually or like... Just, when I, I guess I'm trying to dial in on what I mean by violence. What I mean by violence, did he ever push you, strike you, choke you, yes. hit you with an instrument? How many times was he violent? And please describe what, what do you mean he by violence? He never hit me with an instrument. Okay. But he was like violent, like where he would choke me and pull my hair. How many times in that time that you knew him, did he ever pull your hair and choke you or separately? I would say maybe like three or four times. Okay. And I, I noticed like after he'll be like, he'll be like you're, always, you're always texting all these guys and shit. And like just acting like a jealous, or okay. like overzealous, arrogant, like just, Okay. I don't want to say it, but like dick. Okay. Like just. Let me ask you this, and I know this might be a hard question to ask, and I don't mean to have you relive it, but I'm trying to get an understanding of when his hands are on your neck, what is running through your mind at that time? 
like I felt like like you know like when somebody is like just like choking you and like you can like feel like your mind like it just goes like black and like it's like I like I started seeing like white speckles okay. like in my brain okay and it was like I was just losing breath and the the banging on the wall like when my head hit the wall and, stuff. and this is the most recent time this is yeah. yesterday okay and then um he like had me like this and he was standing over me and that's when I started pulling his hair and he already had a piece of my hair keep in mind but he had a piece of my hair and he had me down like this and then he just started choking me and choking me and that's when I was like I grabbed the back of his head I'm just like trying to like get him off of me he's like let go of me and I'm like you're not letting go of me and stuff and he just like started just going ham okay in quotation marks when he's when he's got you down like that yesterday what what do you think is going to happen when he's got you down like that like I felt like he was trying to kill me like tell me more about that feeling and where that comes from like I just felt like like you you know when you look a person in their eyes and you can just see like the hatred that they have for you okay like and I don't mean it like in a, a crazy way or you know like to sound crazy but like like when you look someone in their eyes and you just see like some kind of resentment or like grief that they have towards you okay it was like it was like he'll be lovey-dovey at first and be sweet and like take me get to get like food and stuff and then it's like he'll just act like he's like pimping me you know like mm -hmm. when he said like uh, I don't care if my brother hit on you we pass bitches around like what is that supposed to mean like and you like like I'm a grown-ass woman like I'm not just something that's gonna be passed around okay like, so when he has his when he has his when he has you down and he's got his hands around your neck and you're feeling the choking if you didn't do something about that what what did you think was going to happen i felt like i was going to die tell me why you felt like you you were going to die because he had such a tight grip on me and it was like i was like like i could feel his arms around my neck and I was just like like on, you know how your throat like kind of clicks like when you can't breathe it was like closing and closing and it was just like really tight in the back of my throat and I was like this and my eyes started bulging on my head and okay. I just like I was like this is life or death okay um afterwards um when you notice that he's no longer breathing what are you thinking at that point i'm just like i mean i hope he's alive but right okay that that's a good answer so how long would you say it took for your hands on his neck for him to stop putting hands on your neck? Like how quickly once you once you started to intervene on what he was doing, when did he stop? I would say it was like the whole fight lasted about like maybe five or six minutes. Okay. Um it just like when he just like started choking me and you know, stuff like that. Um, I noticed like he was just like fighting me and fighting me and like he just, he was looking me in my eyes while he was doing it and I just felt like, like, I just felt like really bad about it. Like it just was a... It's a bad thing. when okay so you're describing you're on your back is that correct when he starts choking you 
Yes. Okay. And then you reach up to start choking him to get him to stop, correct? Yes. Okay. Was there ever a time where once your choking started to get him to stop, did you then change positions to make sure that he couldn't start up again? I like I pulled his I pulled the jacket off of him. Okay. And um I like tried to like get on top of him like cuz he had me like balled up like against the wall. Okay. Like where like the bed you could just like squeeze down and you can't like really like fight back like my legs were kicking and okay. stuff. Okay. And so I like pulled his jacket off him and I tried to like get on top of him and um I was just like and at this point, is he still kind of struggling and fighting with you? He's like, um, he's, he's still like pulling my hair and like okay. attempting to do what he can do. Still fighting? Yeah. Okay. And I just, I don't know. Just... What is, do you want to take a break? You can eat your other bar and yeah. something to drink? We've been at this like an hour or something. Yeah. Do you need to use the bathroom again? I mean, I could. It's up to you. If you want to, you don't have to. I'd like to. Okay. Why don't you get into that bar and we'll we'll talk about what you just mentioned to me outside there when the detect when the other detective gets here, okay? You got like a trash can? Got spit in something? Why don't you go over here in the sink? Come on over in the sink. Sink over there. The, the better thing for you to do right now is to drink water and, and maybe eat another one of those if you can. That's probably a lot better choice than vaping right now. I've been keeping him informed on when you were sleeping and talked to your dad about the about getting you something to eat. You walked down to the wall. She stopped crying. She's doing okay. Um, I think she wants to just get out of the police department lobby for right now. And I don't know, I don't know what she did. I don't know if she's still here or not. Um, so, but they're doing okay. So. Just for clarity, I want you to tell Detective Hess what you talked about just before we went in and used the bathroom about your comfort level in speaking at this point. Well, we left too early. Um, I just like, like just certain things like I feel like I should discuss with my attorney first. I, I told you that right from the beginning. Like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. But like. The questions weren't like too uncomfortable for me. Okay. It was just like more so like just like remembering what happened, how mm -hmm. he was laying. Out. Yeah, and you'll notice if, if you said you didn't want to talk about something, I didn't ask you that question again. Right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to be respectful of your wishes. If you're if there's certain things you don't want to talk about, we won't talk about it. It's fine. Okay. I can understand the position you're in, and I'm not. I'm not trying to like trick you or anything. It's just just a couple of things that I thought of. Do you have a key to that apartment? Um, 
I I like locked I locked the door, um, and I took the keys with me. Okay. Where are those keys? Um, I'm not sure. It's probably in my bag. Okay. Um, when you cleaned last night, did you take, you, you talked about picking up the trash because it got knocked over and stuff. Did you take any trash out to the dumpster? No. So anything that was there is still in the apartment? Yes. Okay. Are you right or left handed? Right handed. Okay. Um, I know you had talked with him earlier about. I did. I took a walk, like, if you mean, like, going out to the dumpster or whatever, I took, like, a walk around the parking lot, like, just getting a breath of fresh air because I was tired of looking at them. Mm. Yeah. I just, like, did a lap and then... Came back. Yeah. Okay. What time do you think that was? I'm not sure what time. You had mentioned something earlier about some injuries that you might have. Oh, and I want to, I'll talk to you more about those in just a minute. But the my question was, was he injured at all? Like, was he, did he have any cuts on his hands or eyebrows? I, mean, I didn't really, like, look at his body. Um, but for the most part, it was mainly just like choking, pulling hair, and was there blood anywhere? I didn't see any blood. Where are you injured? Um, just like I have like throat pain, like like when I, even when I talk like right now, like I Does feel it like still I, hurt? yeah. Is it like hard to something. swallow those? Those things are kind of hard to swallow anyway, but... I feel like something just, like, in my esophagus is, like, closing almost. Like, it's making my voice raspier. Okay. And, um, I have, like, a back pain. It's nothing, like, really too major. And then, um, I just, like, part of my hair, like, my neck right here is, like, real tender. Like, I don't know if you want to take... You want to take a look at it right now? We'll, we'll have somebody come and take yeah. pictures of it. Um, and it'll probably be a female officer that takes some photos just to kind of document your injuries. All right. Okay. Um, do you have any idea what caused any of those specific injuries? Just when he pulled my hand and was choking me. Okay. But you don't, I mean, there wasn't like, you bumped your head on a table or there was nothing, anything that sticks out in your mind? We like... We like knocked over the table, but it was just like where it was like scooted. Like it wasn't like the whole table flipped over, but it was like we like we're fighting in the apartment. So like we like bumped into the table while we were fighting. But You have questions for me? Um, when do you think my attorney will be here? Well, the, the trick with court-appointed attorneys is you don't get one until you get to court. Really. So how long do you think it'll be until I go to court? Well, I can, I can kind of speak to that because we had a very similar case last week. So what's going to happen is... It's, I don't know if that's accurate. It is. It's uh, 20 to 8 at night. Uh, obviously, this just all came to the police's attention in the last four hours. 
743. So this just came to our attention a little bit ago. Um, we have to get a search warrant for the apartment, that sort of stuff. There's a lot that we have to do yet tonight and through the day tomorrow. All right. There isn't any way that we can release you while we do that. All right. Okay. That's not to say that. I mean, that I kind of anything set in that, stone, right? But like, so I it's expect y'all to like. It's not like we would take you from here right to prison because you're already convicted and all that sort of stuff. Or that's way down the road of anything like that. But we don't have a choice as far as um, what to do with you tonight. You have to go to the jail tonight. That's just all. There, 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 there is no other option. Um, I don't know if our case will be submitted to the prosecutor tomorrow or if it might be well, today's Tuesday. Maybe Thursday. It's probably more likely that it's Thursday. Okay, so you probably have to spend two nights there. What they do at that point, I have no idea because number one, we haven't been through the apartment. Number two, we have no idea what injuries he has. What do you mean what they do from there? What the prosecutor does from there, what? Because those are the attorneys. The attorneys are the one that ones that actually authorize or deny the charges. So we put all all of our police reports together, turn them over to the prosecuting attorney's office. They review all the the uh, reports, and then decide what's going to happen to somebody. They might. They, there's any number of things they could do. They could authorize the charges, and then you would go to an arraignment where a judge would formally arraign you on the charges and that sort of stuff, and there might be an attorney there. They could deny the charges and say, no, we don't think that person should be in any trouble. Or they could temporarily deny the charges, which means they could, they would send me a list of things to do, which is, you know, there's all kinds of things that they could, they could tell me to do. And then they would review it once they get all my homework done and get it turned back into them, then they would look at the whole picture and decide what they want to do. That doesn't mean you would be in jail for that entire period of time. I, I can't say what, what what's going to happen with that because we're not in charge of that. That's up to the that's up to the prosecuting attorney's office. All right. So. Okay. So I don't want you thinking like, oh, they threw me in jail. They must think I'm guilty of something. No, that's just what we have to do. We have to do that I and mean, then continue I, to do our. Do I our understand job. it. Okay. I just like, I don't know, it just, it makes me uncomfortable. Like, I like, like, like this cell and stuff, like, I would like, like, solid, like, a little bit of, like, solitude to, like, I don't hear, like, too much noise, because, like, yeah. it just makes my mind race a lot. Mm -hmm. and well, the good news is, is on the receiving side of the new jail, um, it's a lot more individual cells. So I think you'll probably have that. So it's not like you get thrown in general population right off the bat. Well, I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with general population, just like, maybe like, but none of that's up to us either. That's the jail's rules. That's not our house, you know? So, so that's kind of the plan is we'll, we'll have, uh, We'll have those pictures taken of your injuries or anything that hurts you, and then uh, we'll go from there. Any other questions for us? Um, is there any way that I could like, like potentially like take a nap and? Yeah, once you get out to the county, you can. Yep. So how long before? I'm like transporting whatever. Well, they're still working on the paperwork um, to get the photos and everything from you, and that'll take a little bit of time, and then you'll go out there. I mean, it's, like I said, it's quarter to eight, and I bet by 10 o'clock you're asleep. All right, and then, um, as far as, like, the vaping part, like, is there any way that I could have them escort me, like, to just... No, we can't do anything. They wouldn't allow that. They may not even allow the vape in the building. No, not in the uh, jail, but like, I'm talking about like right, right here. Now. Yeah. No, we can't do that anymore. Can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. No. So. All 
right? Anything you want me to tell your dad? Just that I love him and I'll just pray for me. Okay. I'll tell him. I'll tell my mom not to worry about me too much. Tell your mom not to worry? Yeah. I feel okay. Like sometimes she just like. So moms do. She just. I don't know. She just over worries about me. But I mean, she has every right to feel that way. Because you know? your mom. That's kind of comes with it, right? Okay, so we can put you back in the cell you were in until someone else comes in, mm -hmm. right? You want to just lay down there until someone comes and gets you. That's what we can do, okay? They'll take pictures and then get you out there. All right? Yeah. You, you need to wash your hands. The chocolate like got everywhere. <laughs> Sorry, you can do that right there. I don't want you to chocolate on them. I'll put the lot of you wash up. And I'll get your blanket back to you, too. The jury at Yana's trial did not believe she acted in self-defense, rather that it was premeditated. She was thusly sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Mon Alblowie.